Oh, use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw me nearer every day. I'll be willing, Lord, to run.
so glad you get God today. And I know what I'm talking about in my life. My God's not dead. I said, my God's not dead. I said, my God's not dead. He woke me up this morning. And he started me on my way. He's the joy of my salvation. So many people believe they have joy because they have stuff. Or because they have money, which is all going to fade away. Someday it will all be gone. But what gave, God gave me for eternity. Yeah. I mean, though we again are God's people. He didn't have to save me, but he did. Didn't have to love me, but he gave me a G chord. He He's the joy of my salvation. Yes, he is. Well, he's the joy of my salvation. Yes, he is.
Have you got it? Oh, have you got it like the Bible says? How many know if you ain't got it like the Bible says, you ain't got it at all? Right. Well, have you got it? Well, have you got it? Have you got it like the Bible says? Well, have you got it? Okay. 
up to that. And, you know, there's times when you can't tell somebody, you know, what's going on in your life or, or things that you want to pray about. You can't always tell everybody, but you can tell Jesus. And he doesn't tell anybody, and I love him, my praise. Uh, whether I hear a song preach or whether I hear a song sung, really, I think, again, that's important. The main thing is the presence of God in your life. Amen. This morning, I want to preach about the benefits of the, or how the Word of God profits us. I kind of want to get into this because I think that many people today are trying to live their own way, on their own terms, on their own ideology. Uh, again, they have a thought of how they should be living. But God wrote a book. It's called the Bible. There's no other book that can replace this. And many people are trying to do that today. Well, there's a lot of books out there that's written about the Bible and written how to live. And uh, it kind of amuses me how I see people say 10 easy steps to salvation. Four steps to the Holy Ghost. 14 steps to your blessing. Can I give you one step? Jesus. Amen. And you will read about him in the Bible. Now the Bible is something that is sold around this world. Out of all the books that are sold, this is the bestseller. Most people buy the Bible than any book in the world. Do your reference on that. More Bibles are sold than any book. But given that aspect, it's the least read book of all books. Because I think many people want to take the Bible and use it as a decoration. It looks good on the coffee table. It looks good under your arm when you walk into the sanctuary. And many people bring their Bible, and I'm glad you do. But what do you do throughout the week? What do you do on Sunday night? When you take your Bible home. Amen. Come on. Many people today are missing what God wants them to have because they don't know what God wants them to have. Amen. And the reason for that is they do not read their Bible. Amen. Now a lot of people will tell me, they've told me for years, but the major when I read the Bible, I get sleepy. When I read the Bible, I kind of go into a daze. I don't remember what I read. I mean, been there. Well, let me cue you in. Last night I went to sleep. Uh, I got cordless headphones. I put them in, turned on my, my phone to Bible, and it read to me as I was going to sleep. Amen. Now, let me say this again. There's all kinds of means out there today that you can get a hold of the Word. And let the Word get a hold of you. But I want you to understand the Word of God profits all of us. Amen. And when you think about the word profit, it simply means that we gain, we benefit, or we have an advantage right. by something profiting us. Amen. Now, I have many commentaries in my home. I have all kinds of books. You'll see my, 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 my library in there. It's, it's top to bottom full of books. But the only one that I grab to in the time of need, in the time of sorrow, and in the time of heartache is the Word. The only time that, again, that I look into the commentary is to kind of back up and get more understanding about what I read in the Bible. I do not just read commentary. I read it along with the Bible. So many of us today are not getting the profit of God's Word because we're not reading the Word of God and we're not letting the Word read us. Let me say that again. We're not benefiting from the Word because we don't read the Word and let the Word read us. It's the only book that I know that I can read that will read me. So if you're thinking about the Word of God this morning, you're, you have to understand that the Word of God is for our benefit. You read the Word of God on a good day, right? Come on now. How many know that on a good day, everything's fine, I can read a verse and be on my way? But I found this out in my own life that when I'm going through something, I tend to camp out in the Word. I want us to understand this morning that reading the Bible will profit you so much. Yes, amen. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Yep. Hebrews 4, 12 says, for the Word of God is quick, 
powerful or sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divine asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Joshua 1 8. This book, the Bible of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein when you feel like it. You shall meditate when you're in trouble in the Word. That's what the Bible says. He said, You shall meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. To do all that is according to what is written therein. What do again according to all that is written therein. We cannot treat the Bible like a smorgasbord, pick and choose, like or dislike. You must take Genesis to Revelation for what it says. Apply it to your life every day with a made of mind. I when I speak, let me speak the word. When I meditate, let it be on the word. Again, I believe we understand that concept, but are we doing that? So we are again, that we observe to do according to all those written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous. Right. Now, this might be kind of mundane to some of you, and it might be kind of boring to some of you. But this is why we don't have church like we used to have. This is why people don't have miracles like they used to have. This is why the blessings are not coming like they used to have, because we're not living in the Word. If you want to be prosperous, live in the Word. He said, For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Right. Revelation 22, 15, your 18 through 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19. And if any man shall take away the, from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Now I said all that to say this, the word of God is profitable to everyone here that's a child of God. When you neglect the words, you neglect God himself. Amen. When you again don't do what the word, of God, the word of God tells you to do, you are disobeying God himself. Amen. We want the word of God to profit us. We stand here in a congregation this morning, and you're hearing me preach. You hear what I'm saying? You're saying amen to me. Amen. You're nodding your head to me. You lifted your hands saying amen, preacher. And that is sometimes all the Bible you get. Because you do not continue in the Word of God when you leave the sanctuary to read your Bible. There are times at night I wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll go to my office. What do I do down there? I open my Bible. And I begin to let the Word of God speak to me. Not always do I read my Bible to get a message or a sermon, but I read the Bible to better be. I read the Bible to begin to hear what God said to me. Many people said, I don't hear the voice of God. Many people said, they're hearing from the Lord. Can I tell you what the voice of God really is? Is that the Word of God? When you begin to read that Bible, God will speak to your soul. Come on, give God some praise this morning. We cannot pick and choose. We cannot add or take away from the Bible. Amen. Now, I'm going to go one step further this morning. I read the King James Version Bible. Amen. I will stay with the King James Version Bible. Amen. To me, it has worked for me every time. Yeah. To me, it's always come out to be a betterment for my soul. I profit from reading that King James Version. There are some Bible that if everybody, not, and again, I have been combated by many preachers that will come against me and say, Brother Baker, you got to live in the 23rd, 22nd second. you got to live in the sense we're in. you got to understand people are different today. you got to understand that people need more understanding and need to be more clarified to them. So we need to change the Bible. They tell me that. But can I tell you again, the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible is settled in heaven. Yeah. When God wrote a book called the Bible, it was settled forever. And he said right here, don't you add to it, and don't you take it away. 
that means don't you change the meaning of what I'm trying to say. Right. Have you ever got to a place in your life where you said something? And somebody quoted what you said? And did it wrong. Right. Did that make you upset? Right. Well, they twist what you're saying to mean something not good but bad. Can I remind you again, I believe God is fed up. I believe God is angry at this world, and I've got mankind changing the word of God. One Bible says that in my Father's house are many rooms. John chapter 14 tells us different. In my Father's house are many mansions. Now, I don't know about you, but again, when you start changing things around, and, and some are taking the blood out of the Word of God, right. how can anything profit you that you're not getting from God? Come on, come on, somebody say amen. amen. How can anything profit you that does not come from the Lord? Yeah, yeah. Now, you may, you, you may get bored of this sermon, but I'm telling you right now, you want to get back to old time salvation, you want to get back to old time revival, get back in the Word of God. Do what the Word of God tells us to do. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, you'll find that when Jesus was in the wilderness, and the Spirit took him in the wilderness, for 40 days and 40 nights he was tempted of the devil. Or he prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. Afterwards, he was tempted of the devil. Now, we know that Jesus had not ate for 40 days and 40 nights. So afterwards, the Bible said he was hungry. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I go one hour sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Forty days and forty nights, he was hungry without food. So when he came out of the wilderness, Satan showed up. And how did he tempt him? With food. Because he knew his weakness was that he was hungry. Now what did he say to Jesus? When he came out of the wilderness, Satan showed up. What did Satan say? If thou be the Son of God, which he knew he was. Because Satan had been in heaven, he knew the Son of God, but he was just trying to tempt him, be arrogant, if you will. But he said, if you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now the Bible tells you and I that for many people, their bellies have become their God. The Son of Spy himself had become their God. He knew Jesus was hungry. So he said to him again, if you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Yeah. Now what did Jesus say to him? He did not say, you're right. Yeah. I am the Son of God, and I can have food here now, and I can take this stone on the ground and make it into bread, and I can eat and be satisfied. But can I tell you again, food will not give you what God does. Amen. This world will not give you what God does. Your money would I give you what God does. If we live by that word, we're going to be prosperous, and we're going to be successful, and we're going to be blessed, and we're going to be helped, and we're going to be delivered when we take God at His word. Come on, somebody give God praise. He was the Son of God, and He is the Son of God, and He can do all things. But He would not let the devil tempt Him that way. He would not do it the devil's way. So what did he say back to Satan? What did Jesus say back to Satan? He said, he it is written. Yeah. And here what I want to get to. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by part of the word. By some of the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What proceeded out of the mouth of God is right here in writing. It's called the Bible. Come on. We are to live by the Word of God every day of our life. It's a good thing, the bad thing. It doesn't matter how you feel. Amen. The Word of God will profit us if we live by the Word. Man doesn't live by bread alone. That means satisfying yourself. If you need help, it's in the Word. Can someone say amen? Amen. In the book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 20, it simply tells us that God sent His Word yes. and healed them yes. and delivered them from all their destruction. Yes. The Word we know is Jesus Christ. The Word is Jesus. So when you're reading the Bible, you're really reading about Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. 
Jesus came in the Word. He is the Word. We have the Word. If anybody's going to be healed, you need to look into the Word of God and see what the Bible says about healing. If you don't understand the Bible, find someone that can help you. But more than anything else, when I'm going, when I need a healing in my body, I do not say Satan in the name of Jesus. I want you to pretty please flee me. No. I say in the name of Jesus, by his word, by his stripes. It's in the word. By his stripes, I am healed. So the word of God is there to profit us in our mentality, in our body, and in our soul. And I believe we understand the concept of that very much. But if you do not take reading your Bible seriously, you're not going to apply it to your life. Amen? Amen. We take the word of mankind faster than we take the word of God. Right. Right. When a doctor tells you to do something, man, you're right on the money. Yep. When he tells you to take something every four hours, you mark it down, you write it down, you set your alarm to go off every four hours, and you're faithful to do something what man tells you. Yep. I remember when I lived in Texas, 4 o'clock my alarm would go off. By 5 o'clock, we were in the church building in the morning. The first thing we did in that building was we all came together at four, 5 o'clock in the morning. We read the Bible. We all heard the word. And for one hour, we prayed around 6, 6.30. And then we started our day by hearing the word and by praying. Now, again, there were times that I was out all the time tonight. I got to bed late. But yet, 4 o'clock in the morning, I got up, went to the church, and we did this. How many times did we do that a week? Seven. We did it seven times a week. We got into in, in, in the church. Yeah. Now, what was that about? It was called discipline. I did not, Dave, I did not want to get up. I was sleepy. I was tired. But I knew one thing. The Word of God made a change in my life. And I wanted more of that in me. And I wanted more desire to read that. Did I, am I telling you to brag on me? No. There were a lot of men that showed up. And, and the women showed up. And we all prayed that, that morning. And then we started our day. Can I tell you again? When the need came in my life that I needed a healing, God was there. When I needed a miracle, God was there. When I needed strength, God was there. You know why? Because I was walking in the Word of God. Can someone say amen? amen. So you find out the Word of God is profitable to us. So turn in your Bible, please, to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm going to read verse 16 this morning. The Word of God profits us, folks. Now, I've never wrote a book in my lifetime. I wrote one song. I thought it was a good song. Sung the song in church for a few times. I wrote the song on a brown paper bag. And uh, I lost the bag eventually. <laughs> so I lost my song. I've never again wrote a book, not been on the bestseller list of a book. I'm not looking to write a book like God tells me, but I know a book yeah. that benefits my soul. Right. Now what I'm going to read to you this morning is what Paul would write to Timothy. Timothy was a young evangelist, very timid. Timothy was timid. He, he was like a lot of us sometimes. He, he didn't want to be in front of people. He, he, could, he couldn't speak well. Like, he, he fluttered around when he talked. And, and he was very timid, but Paul took him under his wing as a young evangelist was teaching him well. Now when Paul wrote 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, do you know where Paul was? Paul was in jail. Do you know when Paul was in jail, what his greatest thought was? His thought was, is that when I leave this world and I go to heaven, who will continue carrying the gospel? That's what Paul was thinking in his cell. That's why he was thinking in jail. I wish to God that more men and women today have that desire, amen, to pass the word of God to someone else. We need our children to hear the word. We need grandma to hear the word. We need our family to hear the word. But you cannot give something you don't have. 
You need to know the Bible. Can someone say amen? amen. Look what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Everybody say all. All. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed. God breathed this word into existence. That means this word does have life. Somebody say, how do you know the word of God has life? Because St. John chapter 6, verse 63 tells us, It's the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, but the word I speak unto you. They are two things. They are spirit and they are life. Can, can someone say amen? How many know when you read your Bible, it seems like life comes in you. It seems like the blessing comes in you. All of a sudden, it seems like you want to dance a while, shout a while, rejoice a while, praise the Lord a while. Life comes in you because it's God breathed. I thank God for that. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And is profitable. And is profitable to you and me. I don't know about you folks, but I love good preaching. I love good singing. I love good hallelujahs. I love clapping my hands. I love everything about worshiping God. But the only thing that promised me when I really am in trouble is the Word of God. Can someone say amen? I can get in that Word, and that Word comes alive in me. As that song says, when I begin to read my Bible, I get confirmation. i got a feeling everything's going to be all right. i got a feeling my people's on the way. i got a feeling the answer's coming to me. Can somebody say amen? And i got the Word of God alive in me. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? For doctrine. Many people today are running the church by what they lay down. Many people, again, pastors included, are running the church by their theology and by their thought and what they want to see in place. But can I remind you again, the doctrine of this church right here is nothing more than the word of of God. Are you hearing me? I've had people come up here and debate things that I do, and I said, look, it's in line with the Word. I don't care if it's in line with the Word of God or not. I don't like it. I don't care what you like. I don't care what you dislike. If it's not in the Word of God, we're not going to do it. We're not running the church by anything but by the Word of God. Can somebody say amen? I was asked one time, what do we believe in? I simply said the Bible. Somebody said, well, don't you have doctrines and laws? And I said, yeah. Who does that? The Bible. If you don't set a church up in the Word, it's not a church. If you don't run a church by the Word, it's not a church. And if the church doesn't live by the Word, it can't be a church. I might get through to anybody here. The Word of God is profitable to all of us. And so when you look at this again, it's profitable for doctrine. That's that belief that we hold dear to our heart, which is the Word. And again, the doctrine we have is what's taught from the Bible. I remember years ago that somebody wanted to teach a session in the church. And they gave me a, a list and a book they were going to teach from. So I took it home and I looked at the layout of what they wanted to teach. And I looked into the book. The book was very seldom in the Bible. I went back to this preacher and I said, I can't allow this. He said, but I feel in my heart that God wants me to teach this. I said, if you're teaching the Bible, good. I said, but this is not biblical. He got mad at me. Let me remind you of something. If you're not being led by the Bible, then what's leading you? If you're not living by the Word, then what are you living by? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, even in the adult Sunday school class, I never remember years ago when we had an adult Sunday school class in Sunday school, I remember that we had literature come to us. Never like the literature. You know why? Because it's pre-programmed. It's already written out for you. My, my heart may say, I need to teach something different, but yet i got to stay on the program. So we finally said, it ain't going to happen. We got rid of the literature and started opening our Bible and teaching nothing but the Word of God. And what I'm telling you, it brought a blessing to everyone that heard the Word of God. Can someone say amen? 
So the doctrine we have, if you want to know what it is, is the Bible. Yeah. Now we have bylaws that set the church in order. And we have the scripture in that. Right. But the doctrine of the church, and what we believe, is Genesis to Revelation. Right. I'm going to tell you again. You get mad at me if you want to. I do not read revised versions. Right. I read the Bible. Yeah. If you hear me quote the Word of God, I quote from King James Version. Yeah. Matter yeah. of fact, I sat under one, I went to one church one time where a preacher was preaching. He read from some revision. I mean, there's so many out there, I can't keep up with it. But what he read, I'm thinking, I've never heard that before. Yeah. Where's he getting that? And find out, I knew what he was doing. He was reading from something that man changed in the Word of God, yeah. which God says, do not do. Right. Yeah. And people will take issue with me now. I, I, know I'm on, I know I'm on media video. I know that. And I know people are going to hear what I'm saying. And they're going to say, boy, is he down on Bibles. I'm telling you what. I, I, I'm not down on no Bible except the one that changes the Word of God. Amen. Except the one that do not mean what God said to me. I hate for anybody to misquote me. And God doesn't want you to misquote what he said. Take a word and read it and do what it says do. And quote it like it's written. Amen. The doctrine, again, the sin of belief that we have. Look here at 1 Timothy 4, 7, 4, 16. Take heed unto thyself. Paul again would tell Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Folks, I, I want you to get this. Paul was telling Timothy, take heed to the word of God. And take heed to the doctrine. And what we say in that Bible, he said, well, God said in that Bible, you continue in that for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Yeah, yeah. How misleading is it to people that sit in the congregation, especially those that are lost, and give them false doctrine? Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. Paul told Timothy, take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear. Amen. I do not want to stand before God and God tell me, you did not preach my gospel. Yes, I did, Lord. No, you did not preach what I wrote. You read what man wrote. You preached what man did. You have man doctrine and not my doctrine. Right. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to take that very serious. I've been caught on the carpet, Sharon, by misquoting the scripture. Yeah. I did it honestly. I mean, I didn't mean to. But people came up to me at the church and said, you got that so wrong. Yep. I said, what? And they gave me the scripture. I said, well, I was right. No, you wasn't. Now, I'm going to tell you again. You may say, well, that's a no big deal. It's a big deal when people are sitting in the congregation yes. that's lost, that don't know their Bible. Yes. They take what you say face value. Come on now. That's why I read scripture to you. That's why I'm telling you what Paul told Timothy. Paul said, take heed to yourself. Take heed to the doctrine and live by that and then also give it to the hearer. Yeah, that's why how we benefit by the gospel and by knowing the truth of God's word. I know it again. The Bible says in John chapter 8, you shall know the truth. Amen. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Right. Why are we trying to preach it out of books? Right. I know people that bring books to church and preach out of that. Yeah. Why are we trying to, again, not preach the truth? Right. The prophet will we have, when you leave here this morning, I want you blessed because of the word. Right. I don't want you just blessed because I'm saying something out there. I want to give you Bible and tell you again, if you want to be profitable for the Lord, the problem the prophet we have is doing by the word of God. Because the word of God is what makes us Amen. who we are. Yeah. I think I told you before, a pastor went home to be to, a, to have dinner with a family one time and the family wanted to impress the, the pastor so they cooked a good meal and everything and they ate and sat in the, in the living room talking and finally the woman spoke up, the wife spoke up, told the young child sitting there, said, uh, bring me the book that I love to read. Okay, mom, went into the other room and brought back the Reader Digest. <laughs> He, she was trying to impress him by having a decoration yeah. on the coffee table. Amen. Can I tell you something? If you have to blow the dust off your Bible, something's wrong. Yeah. Right. If your Bibles are sticking together after having it for 20 years, something's wrong. I still got my Bibles I wore out at least 
The pages are falling out of my Bible, and I just can't get rid of them. I've got markings in there. I've got, I've got things in there that I made notes of. And man, I go back to them every now and then. Can I tell you again, uh, a Bible that's wore out means that you're not. Yeah. Simply means that you wore that Bible out to make you a better Christian. And I'm going to say this today. If you go to a church where not preaching the full gospel and go to a church where the Bible has been changed, I'm telling you again, get out of there. You go to a full gospel church where they believe in nothing more than Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And again, that Jesus again is coming back after His church and that believe in the rapture of God. Can somebody say amen? So the word of God is profitable for doctrine. Also profitable for what? Reproof. This again is where the scripture gets drilled to us. The word of God, when you read it, and let me listen to my terminology here. The word reproof means to scold you. Right. It means to correct you. Look at me. How many can stand here today and say, Brother Baker, I love it when I get scolded. <laughs> I love it when I get corrected. Man, it just threw my soul. I can't wait for the next person to walk up and say, you were wrong. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, glory be to God. Jesus all over me. I don't think so. No one likes to be scolded or corrected. Even if you're wrong, you don't like it to be. But the Word of God can deal with your soul. Amen. Not your body. Not your likes or dislikes. The Word of God, when you read that, will scold you. Yeah. How does that happen? It will let you know how you've been living. Yeah, it will let you know how wrong you are. Right. How many of sometimes we get bubble heads? Oh, yeah. 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 Let me explain that to you. Big head. Our head gets swell because people say you're a good preacher. You're a good singer. Oh, you bless my soul. Let me tell you something. If that becomes a place of anybody's life, you got pride in your life. The Bible will scold you about pride. Right. It'll scold you about disobedience. Yeah. How do you know that? Because when you read the Bible and you come across that in the Bible, again, that disobeying God is a sin, it will scold you for what you've been doing wrong and disobeying Him, and you don't like to be scolded. But can I tell you again, the Bible tells you and I not to despise the chastisement of the Lord. God will correct you and the Word, and you should feel sorrowful. Yeah. And you should feel bad. Now, let me go one step further. I'd rather be scolded by the Bible than by man. Right. I'd rather the Word of God correct me than be continue on as somebody else has to correct me. Right. So you understand, again, the Word of God is profitable to us. Go back again in this scripture in 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine and for reproof. So we know, again, that it will correct us. Yeah. Proverbs 15, 32 says... He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. That's the word. Yeah. Oh, Brother Baker, I don't want the word to scold me. Let me tell you again. If you refuse instruction from the Bible, you despise your own soul. That means God can't help you. But again, if you hear it, and here's the reproof, you get understanding. Folks, I'm giving you the word of God this morning and telling you how it will profit you because, again, it's good for doctrine, it's good for reproof. The next one says it's good for correction. Now, again, somebody said, well, correction reproof is the same thing. The reproof says you're guilty. Correction is when you do something about that guilt. Amen. That's correction. It simply means you bring into conformity the standard of God's word. You bring yourself... Through, through again, the correction of God, you bring yourself into conformity. You say, I know I'm guilty, I know I've been living wrong, I've been doing wrong, but I will correct that and start living by the word. That's what correction means, is that now you do something about the wrong. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Here again, it's profitable for correction. And the Bible tells us not to be weary of his correction. Again, I don't like to be corrected. Am I by myself up here? Yeah. Well, somebody tried to correct me, and probably the biggest thing they corrected with is your speech. Yeah. You didn't say that right. right. That's not how that word is spoken. 
The list can go on and on with how they correct you. Yeah. And yet you look at them and say, who are you to correct me? You're as bad as I am. <laughs> so understand, there's no one likes to be corrected like no one likes to be chastised. Right. But I'm telling you again, the Word of God will correct you. If you know the wrong that you're doing, the Word of God will tell you how to get it right. So it will correct you. Right. If you live by the Word of God, Hebrews 12, 6 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chastises. Yeah. He loves us enough. But can I remind you again, the Word of God prophesies us this way, for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction. What else does it correct us or prophet us from? For instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness means that we adhere to moral principles. We take this word and live righteous by it. What righteous simply means is getting right with God. If you're going to get right with God, you do right by the Bible. Can someone say amen? amen. If you are again going through something, it's the word of God that brings healing to your body, to your mind, and to your soul. The body heals you. Again, you've got to live by the word to become righteous. How many of many people go to church and say, I'm saved, and that's all they give you? Yeah, yeah. They do not live by the word. And many churches across America this morning, no doubt, are telling people, mega congregation, telling them that you come to church, I'll preach to you, I'll give you what you need. God loves you the way you are. You don't need to change. If you're saved, that's all you need to do. You just live your life and just be happy and be just, just, just do what you want to do because God loves you. Can I tell you again? That's not what the Bible teaches us. Right. If you're going to be righteous, you're right with God. How do you right with God? Live it by the word. Yeah. Yeah. How many of those again? How, how many likes it when your children disobey you? Uh, My kids, what? Uh, the oldest one is 52. I don't like it. He's, at 52 years old, I still wouldn't know, baby. <laughs> I know you're not going to. But I do know when they were smaller, I didn't like it. When I told them to do something, they didn't do it. Again, they got in trouble without a living of what I told them to do. I've never used the terminology like some people do. It's, just, it's my house, my roof, and I bought your clothes. So you better do what I say. I never said that. I simply said, if you love me and I love you, then you'll do what I say do. I know again, if you love God, because you know He loves you, then you do the things that please Him. And that's by living by the Word of God. Come on, can someone say amen? amen. So we know again that it's profitable for instruction in righteousness. Right. Matthew 5, 6 tells you and I, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Again, I think we understand the concept that the Word of God is profitable to us. So have you been losing lately? Have you not been gaining lately? Does it seem like your life has come to a standstill lately? Does it seem like you go to church and everybody dancing around you, but you get nothing out of it? You go to church and hear the preacher saying, boring. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. You're not living in the Word. Amen. The Word of God is breathing on you. Yeah. The Word of God is alive in you. Amen. Now, when I say something in the Bible, and you know it's there, do you know what most people would do when they say, Brother Baker, you're right. Ooh, it's in the Bible. I read that. Do you know what most people would do? React to it. Yeah. How would they react to what I'm saying is true? I'm going to cue you in on this. They're going to say, Amen, preacher. Amen, brother. Woo, glory be to God. And pray to heaven. They react to truth. Yeah. I know, again, that's not a, quite common in most churches because we have this quiet time going on. Oh, I don't want to offend nobody. Let me tell you something. We need more Holy Ghost filled preachers. We need more fire up preachers. We need more preachers that will live by the Word of God, walk in the Word of God, and teach the truth behind the Bible stand and not just tickle the ears of mankind. Can someone say amen? I believe their souls are at stake and people dying and going to hell and they need to know the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to tell you again. Maybe we're sitting here this morning saying, well, I know someone that's not here that needs to hear what you said. I think God has people here that need to hear what I'm saying. Amen. I do. If you're not living by the Word of God, you're living by your own terms. Yeah. How long would you last on your job if you would endure your job and did your job the way you wanted to? How long would you last if you were working for an automobile maker and you decided to put the front fender on the back? 
with the motor on top of the car. And you do that every day. Will they keep you on that job by not doing it by the rule? Will they keep you employed if you again done things yourself? This is where the mess comes in many times in the body of believers. We got too many people trying to do their own thing and not living by the word. And they pick and choose what they want to hear. And again, when someone is preaching about sin, they don't like that part, but they want to hear all about the joy. I'm going to tell you right now, get rid of the sin and you'll get the joy back in your life. Get the peace back in your soul and you'll be happy again. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. I will really work to tell you I'm not perfect. And I think you know that. When you shot me, you were shot. Uh, get over it. <laughs> I am not perfect. But I know who one is. I know who is. Yes. Jesus. Amen. He was without sin. Yes. And God wrote a book. And God gave you a manual. And God said, this is the way it's going to be. Yep. And you cannot change that. I cannot change that. And I'm going to tell you again. We live in a time today where people are backing away from the Word and preaching out of more books. I heard about a man one time that brought, again, a magazine to church. There was an article in there that he liked. It was, a, it was about, it was Christian article, but he preached from the article. Now you tell me when you are laying on your deathbed dying, you want the Lord to heal you, call that preacher up and say, bring me your article. I need to hear it one more time. Do you know what we need to be doing and taking that word, what David said in the book of Psalm, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Now what was David saying? David simply says, I read your word. I know your word. That word alive in me. I remember that word. It's in my heart. I know what's in your heart ought to be treasurable. Because from the abundance of the heart I'm not speaking. And where your treasure is, where your treasure is, where your treasure is, will your heart be also. Amen. Brother Baker, I got offended. Listen to me. It won't be the last time. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody talk bad about me. It won't be the last time. <laughs> if I would go by the aspect that I got offended by what people do and say to me or do to me, I would never go to church. Right. But I got to buy it. Psalms 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Now let me tell you something. If I did not know that was in there, when my Christ has come, I would fold under it. But I know that's in there. I know the Bible telling me I'm going to have affliction. And I'm going to have trouble in my life. Oh, but my God in heaven that sat on the throne this morning, he delivered me. He delivered me out of them all. And the word of God could profit me because I know the word. Mm. I'm going to tell you right now, if we don't start living by the word of God, we're in trouble. I think we got a good congregation this morning. And I think we got good people in the church. Like the old saying goes, there's one eye open for the whole world. Well, Brother Baker, I don't agree with what you just preached. Let me tell you something. If you disagree with what I just preached, you better bring your Bible. And when you bring your Bible to me, you better show me where I was wrong. Because what you think is not going to work for me. What you say to me because you didn't like, you got out of some many people, some people come to church and they think they put needles in the seat because they squirm them all the time. <laughs> now, out of the conviction, the word of God is talking to them. Amen. And he's trying to profit them. And they say, ah, he's preaching on me. You know the night I got saved? Bob, the night I got saved, I was in church, I told you before, around two or three thousand people. And when that preacher was a distance from me on the platform, so help me, he looked right at me. Out of 3,000 people, he only saw me. Everything he said, guilty, 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 guilty. You know what that was? He wasn't looking at me. I thought he was. Because things were discerning me out. What was discerning me was the Word. He was preaching the Word of God. And when it came to me, the Word of God, did I not tell you in Hebrews chapter 4, that the Word of God was discerned, the intense, 
And the thoughts of your heart, did not I tell you again that many times, even as Christians, when the Word of God has been preached, you get a little restless. Yeah. How do you know I just throw that piece of chewing gum? <laughs> How do you know I've been gossiping? How do he know that I cheated my work out of the time that I put in? How do he know that? I didn't. No other preacher did either. Unless God showed him. Then what happened? The word of God prophets you oh, yeah. by discerning you out and say, boy, yeah. straighten up. Yeah. You're wrong. Right. And that's where we go back into correction, reproof, and instructions in righteousness. Right. If you are not, if you're doing something wrong and you don't feel bad, or the word of God doesn't kind of get under your skin, so to speak, then something's wrong. Yeah. Either the preacher's wrong or your soul is wrong with God. And you're not wanting to admit that. But I'm going to tell you again, I mean we're all one body. Right. We all come together in one body. Now again, I mean, I gave you scripture from what I just read right. from the Bible. And again, this is what we have to apply to our life every day. So look here again at the last part of this also. It tells us in verse 17 that the man of God, see again, we are again profitable by the word, doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. This all prophets us that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to do all good works. Now, you said, Brother Baker, I thought you said that nobody's perfect. I did say that, and I'll stand by that. Then it's saying right here that all these things will come to us and help us that we may be perfect. The word perfect means complete. Right. We're not going to be perfect until we get to heaven. Right. But we can be complete in the Word of God by living by the Word of God. Again, the man of God that preaches the gospel ought to be furnished in the Word. Right. The Word of God ought to be given to him. He ought to understand that out of all good works. So again, what well, that simply means that, again, we'd be perfect and thoroughly furnished. That means that the men that preach the gospel ought to be mature. You don't have a kindergarten out there trying to teach other kids. Right. What that means that when a man or woman is preaching the gospel, when they grow in the word of God, they become mature. Yeah. Thoroughly furnished into all good works. Now I'm learning always. I can be taught. I can be helped. I, I don't know it all. I mean, how many knows the same thing? You don't know it all. So again, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, and again, that we may thoroughly be furnished into all good things. We as God's people need to take the Word of God more seriously. Now, in closing this morning, I think it would profit all of us to set aside a time every day to read your Bible. Well, I know there's not been a shouting service. But I want you to be profitable. Yeah. How many of you, again, would start a business without money? Or start a business that's doomed to fail? Why would you do that? It's not going to profit you. Just waste your time on anything that's not going to better you. I'm going to go one step further. Wow. Be careful what you read. I'm on the internet. I read a lot of stuff. By a lot of preachers. Huh. I know we're on YouTube, but I watch the YouTube also for different things. I've never watched a sermon that I've preached on YouTube. Won't do it. But I will look at other men of God on the YouTube. And some of them are, whoo, they're out there. Some of them, I don't know where they got their Bible. Some of them are false teachers. They are false leaders. They're sheep in wolf's clothing. They come to bring their own doctrine. They come and tell you, you're okay, I'm okay, everybody's okay. No, we're not. We need God's help. Amen. We need to look at ourselves. Before you judge me, look at you. Yeah. Now, first of all, you have no right to judge me. Right. That's, that's, that's not scriptural. Right. But I'm telling you right now, you want to profit your life? You want to better your life? Good about the word. Yeah. I'm so excited many times to hear people saying to me, they'll come and say, Brother Beck, I've been reading the Bible. I didn't know that was in there. Boy, did God bless me with this. Boy, that's awesome to hear. Because somebody's reading it the right way. They'll let God feed them and breathe on them and help them. <laughs> I've had to combat many people who have brought stuff to me that they've heard in other churches. I said, that's wrong. Matter of fact, I got a call uh, from Texas one time. 
And they said, Brother Baker, my pastor said this, is this right? And I said, no, he's not. How do you know he's wrong? I said, I read scripture to them. This is not lined up with the word. If you don't know your Bible, you will be misled. Right. I want to be profitable by the word of God. Come here, song. It's written for our betterment. God gave you a book to live by. It's the roadmap to heaven. It tells us how to talk, how to walk, and how to live in everyday life. It's profitable. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are you profitable? How do you feel about your God? How are you walking? How are you living? What's in your life? Are you become critical of other people? Again, have you become a part of a church service where it seems like you get nothing out of it? I can only give you so much in the little time I'm up here. The Bible teaches us to study, to show thyself to prove unto God. The workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. If I don't study my Bible, I cannot give you anything. I need to study my word that I may be, uh, again, understand what I'm teaching you is truth. Again, are you profitable? Are you at a stalemate? Have you quit growing? Have you quit loving? Have you, again, felt like you don't want to come to church? Your desires are gone. I told you before that not every Monday morning, I resign from the church. What do you mean, preacher? I get discouraged. Sometimes I don't see what congregation don't think I want them to do. Oh, it's kind of a joke there. I don't do that every Monday, but there have been times I have. Because I just felt like I'll just resign. I'll go somewhere else. But you know what I do? And I begin to realize that the word is what is wrong with people. When people come against you or come against me, it's because the word has rattled them up. And Satan doesn't like it. And they'll come against you. But if you know you're right, stand your ground. Right. Stand still and see the salvation of God begin to move in the lives of you women. Please stand your feet. We're going to pray. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness. What are you reading? What are you hearing? And what do you apply in your life? to be profitable. I'm going to ask you to gather around the altar, every child of God, every sinner, every Christian. Come on, that word's still here. Jesus is the word. He wants to help you. If you've been slacking off, you pray God help you do better. Help me God not to be slacking off on the word. I need to set time every day to stay in that word. Let's all pray some more, every child of God, every backslider, every sinner. Let's pray. Amen. I'm going to stand to your feet. Thanks for coming out. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank God for that. You know, how many know that God is God's a healer? Amen. I don't care what man does to you, they can do all the operation they want. God has to heal you. So thank God for that good report. Amen. All right, say this with me. You ready? It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Take somebody's hand, tell me sure to love. You.